very beautiful Cancer, thank you for joining me. This is your January 2018 astrology forecast. This is for Cancer Rising, Cancer Sun Sign, Cancer Moon. Um, we start off the year with a full moon in your sign um, on the first or second, depending on where you live. And this is a really powerful full moon for you. This is a time of some, maybe some big emotional realizations. This, I mean, you're comfortable with this full moon. Others may not necessarily be, but they, there's a certain, there's a certain um, wholeness that this full moon will bring for you. And you might find that your dreams, your psychic ability, that kind of thing is highlighted. And, um, and you might have some interesting revelations, some interesting, I interesting insights. Um, there's a possibility of some emotional realizations in terms of relationships that you're in or in terms of what, what it, how it is you feel about yourself. I feel like there should be something that becomes very clear, that it becomes un, that is unmasked for you at the beginning of the year. And you should feel a sense of clarity after the full moon. There should be almost like you understand something that was perhaps frustrating you or bothering you. There's a sense of closure and you're feeling a lot, a lot more empowered as we move into the year, which is a really, really positive thing. It should, it's a really lovely energy to start the, the year with for you. I mean, I'm Cancer Moon, and I had an incredible psychic experience um, on the 1st of January, um, of the in, in the morning of the 1st, and um, it made it very clear to me on an emotional level what was going on with me and where I had been, um, maybe not been uh, true to myself and um, suddenly you know, it left me with so much clarity. So hopefully you've shared a similar kind of experience whereby that full moon just somehow brought something to light, illuminated something and took the blinders off and you were able to maybe gain some closure on a certain situation, which may well have been to do with relationships. Okay, on the seventh we've got Mars. So I just want to talk actually a bit generally about what's going on with you because there's so much activity going on in your relationship sector. Um, in your seventh house, there's um, a lot of activity going on there. The focus has been on one-to-one -one relating and, and um, on partnerships, and there might have been some difficulties there. There's, there's certainly been a lot of learning there. Um, on the seventh, Mars is conjunct Jupiter in Scorpio in your fifth house, and you know the fifth house is the house of romance and play and fun and joy and self-expression. So this might be a really lovely day to initiate a new project that you're um, that you've been thinking about doing, um, especially if it's a creative project. This would also be maybe you're feeling very, very driven to just get out there on a romantic level. It'd be a great day to spend with friends, socialising, doing something that you enjoy and being around people because you're probably going to be feeling a drive to be quite magnanimous, to be quite open and um, it's certainly a really lovely day. On the 9th we've got um, the Sun conjuncting Venus and Pluto um, and that's in your 7th house and this is really, it's really lovely energy for one-to-one -one relationships, this really lovely energy um, and it could, if you're single, it could be that you feel yourself being drawn to somebody. It could be that somebody comes along and there's this magnetic pull that you just cannot ignore because, you know, we've got the Sun, Venus and Pluto there. And you could just be like, wow, you know, who is this person? I need to get to know this person. Um, there's some really lovely sex styles going on this month um, and really positive energy, you know. Um, but, and we've got a grand trine in water as well, and you're a water sign, so you should be feeling quite... I feel like you're starting this year in a place of quite of, of emotional strength, almost like you've dropped something, you know, you've dropped a certain heaviness that was perhaps present in 2016, which is great. Um, you're, we, we've got Saturn entered... Um, Saturn entered... <laughs> Saturn entered Capricorn. Um, in late last year in December and now this has you thinking about your relationships from a far more serious point of view um, you no longer it's very likely that you're not interested in just um, relationships that are just fun and flirty and, and and you know that don't have very much depth to them you're now taking commitments seriously and that's whether you're single or whether you're in a partnership you want you're likely to be attracted to people who are 
more secure, who are more mature, and people who know what they want and who have a certain groundedness about them. And, you know, for those of you who are in relationships, this could be the solidifying of a partnership. This could be committing um, uh, on a deeper level, on a more serious level to a partnership. You know, um, it's not so much that you're in a somber mood, but Saturn here, basically, it's, it's almost like, right, I'm not playing anymore. I know what I want. I'm going to be more cautious in, when it comes to romance. Maybe, I mean, Jupiter's in your fifth house, so that's really supportive energy, and that's quite fun. But certainly, when it comes to actually committing, you're, you're, you're looking for something real that will last, that has longevity, and you're looking for a partnership that will essentially see you far into the future. Jupiter sextiles Pluto on the 16th, which is bringing some really lovely energy, again, to romance, creativity, fun, one-to-one -one relationships. Um, this is really, you know, we really start off with such a focus on relationships, how you relate to others. And looking at, I feel like Cancer, you have got a far clearer understanding of what it is that you require on an emotional level in partnership. Um, and, you know, like I said earlier, my moon's in Cancer and I have, you know, there's been a lot of learning, a lot of growth. And perhaps, you know, what the Saturn in um, Sagittarius last year in your sixth house perhaps on some level you would, you felt you had to sacrifice certain things and you felt that there was a certain unfairness in relationships but it's taught you a lot and I feel like you're at a place now where you know what you want and you're not willing to put up with less than what you feel you deserve and um, and yeah you, you're very clear you know and so there's a lot of positive energy it's almost like you've cleared away the cobwebs and now it's allowing all this fresh energy in. On the 17th, this is followed by a new moon in your seventh house. So I mean, how much more fresh energy can we, you know, and positive energy really can we bring to this house? Um, there may well be a lot of opportunities for romance. Um, this could also be business opportunities as well, and friendships. But, you know, there's fresh energy here that's been brought. It's almost like after that, the beginning of the month and that full moon in your sign where I feel like you probably on some level made peace with something and 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 realize what it is that you need and what is what's worth let what what's worth hanging on to and what's left worth and what needs letting go of it's almost like now you know this fresh energy comes in and the new moon you know um, comes in to bless that seventh house of yours um, the sun, you know, okay, then eventually moves into Aquarius in, in your 8th house. Um, that's on the 20th, a few days before that, Venus moves in on the 18th. So now you're, you're retreating a little bit more um, on the kind of more spiritual and psychological level. You know, you're wanting to perhaps reflect, you're perhaps wanting to um, kind of withdraw into yourself a little bit more, perhaps you're looking at um how you're looking at maybe uh you know things to do with reflecting on things to do with previous relationships um power dynamics and things like that um if you are in a bond you're looking for to intensify that bond you're looking to take it even deeper because the eighth house is traditionally ruled by scorpio and it takes things to a deeper level and it's about intimacy so if you're in a relationship now you're looking for more intimacy in that relationship and even if you're not, you're looking for more intimacy in general in the term, in, in the ways that you relate to people. You are not so interested in the small talk. You want to go deep and you want to talk about things that are real. On the more mundane level, this can also mean this is time of sorting through finances, um, taxes, that kind of thing. And maybe even dealing with shared resources with a partner as well. Um, there can be benefits that come to you. There can be um, loans is a good time, better time for applying for loans, things like that, grants. Um, you kind of, you can attract money um, at this point as well through other people and through shared resources. Um, and Mercury goes into your eighth house as well um, on the 31st, which again takes the thinking and the communicating and it's what you're thinking about deeper attachments when it comes to, you know, where you've been, there's been a lot of activity around relationships, you've been thinking about that, you know, now you're, um, now you're looking to kind of deepen things and, and 
really understand the dynamics of what's going on. Um, this could have you as well researching um, researching things to do with financial matters. Um, good time to make a financial plan with Mercury here in the 8th house and Venus and the Sun there. It's a good time for you to be getting organised, um, especially because we have Mars moving from um, your 5th house to your 6th house on the 26th. And the 6th house rules. Um, it rules the day-to-day, -day, it's to-do lists, it's pets, it's routine, it's health habits, it's where you work, it's your workplace and it's service. So this is a good time, as the energy starts to shift into the 6th house and the 8th house, um, this is a good time now to start organising, getting yourself organised, um, really kind of do a great time to implement some health routines that really serve you. If there are any addictions that you want to get rid of, this is a powerful, far more powerful time for being able to deal with those as well. Um, and you should find that yeah, you'll be driven to be of service to people. You'll be driven to get things done and complete that daily to-do list. Um, we finish this month off with a full moon in your second house in Leo and it's a blue moon because it's the second full moon of the month and it's a, sol it's a solar eclipse, it's a lunar eclipse, total lunar eclipse. So this brings the attention to your resources um, and this also, so there could be um, new opportunities for making money that come in, um, there could be, it could be that you're looking to uh, implement some new kind of financial structure. You can see how the energy starts to move to this kind of more financial part of your chart. So <clears throat> this is a good time for, you know, um, thinking about, or maybe even, you know, yeah, thinking about what it is you want to bring in on a financial level. How can you create more security for yourself? This full moon is about security um, for you. And so how you can create more security, how you can create more stability. I feel like you're gonna be feeling quite grounded this month and the energy is gonna shift from relationships to how can I create more financial security for myself? How can I be more organised in my daily life? And it would be quite an earthy feel to it, even though the full moon is in Leo, which is a fire sign. Um, this can also see you looking at things to do with self-worth. I mean, eclipses tend to eclipse things out of our lives. Um, so perhaps if there have been debts and stuff like that, you're starting to get organised about them. And, you know, eclipses can, the effects, their effects can last as long as six months. So... It could be that now you're kind of starting to get on track financially um, or you feel that you, it could also be on an emotional level, you feel that you know better who you are and with it being in Leo it could be that you're, you're not afraid if there's something that's holding you back from expressing yourself or feel like you truly be yourself or, or give the love that you want to give. It might be that, that whatever that thing is that was holding you back kind of gets released and eclipsed on an emotional level and finds you um, feeling a deeper sense of uh, of you-ness, you know, being able to be you, be yourself, and um, as if the load has been slightly lightened. Okay, thank you so much for watching me, Cancer. Watching me? Yeah. Thank you so much for watching, <laughs> Cancer. Um, I will be back in February um, with more astrology, and I hope you have a wonderful 2018. I love this energy. It feels so much better than last year already. Um, and, you know, I think this is going to be a really positive year for you where you're going to be building some really firm foundations. And I think that love is going to become something that you can trust in more, more now more so than ever. You will be cautious with it. You will be reserved. And that will be to your benefit. Um, you will want to, you will want to allow people to show you who they are before you make any deep attachments or commitments and that will work in your favour. Um, I feel like this could be a year where you could potentially meet somebody who you're with for a very long time so romance is, is going to be an interesting area for you this, this year. Thank you so much for watching. Um, feel free to find me on Facebook, Astro Anushka or on Instagram at Anushka Kaka Kaka and I will see you guys again soon. Bye bye! Mwah.